life freaks of design. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of Richard Dawkins, who is perhaps the most well-known Darwinist uh, in our time. And in one of his books, he starts out on page one by pro proclaiming, biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. So according to Dawkins, that's the very definition of biology, the study of things that appear to have been designed. Well, how do we know? Why? He, of course, does not think they were designed. He's a Darwinist and thinks Darwinian processes is, are responsible. But why does he even think they look designed? You know, why he doesn't think they were designed? Why does he think they look designed? Is it, is it for some aesthetic reason? Is it because, you know, uh, baby seals are so cute or rainbows are so pretty? No, for Dawkins, it's not an aesthetic judgment. It is an engineering judgment. <laughs> he writes, we may say that a living body or organ is well designed if it has attributes that an intelligent and knowledgeable engineer might have built into it in order to achieve some sensible purpose. Any engineer can recognize an object that has been designed just by looking at the structure of the object. What's he saying? He's saying the purposeful arrangement of parts is how we recognize design. Well, is the appearance of design in biology, is it like seeing faces in the clouds? Is it, is it ephemeral or, or what? Not according to Dawkins. According to Dawkins, the appearance of design in biology is overpowering. He writes, the living results of natural selection, which he thinks is responsible for the appearance, overwhelmingly impress us with the appearance of design, as if by a master watchmaker impress us with the illusion of design and planning. Now Dawkins was writing in 86 and he's primarily a zoologist concerned with animals but as you know science has made much progress in understanding the molecular and cellular basis of life which is the foundation of life and that knowledge has only increased uh, the overwhelming appearance of design. For example 10 years or so ago the journal Cell published a special issue on molecular machines with, uh, with um, articles that have titles such as the cell is a collection of protein machines, polymerases in the replosome, machines within machines, mechanical devices of the spliceosome, motors, clocks, springs, and things. Uh, and here's an example of a molecular machine uh, that is not listed in, in, in that uh, table. This is called a cilium. And I'd just like to tell you that each one of these dots here, colored dots, is itself a very complex protein. And there are hundreds of proteins that make up this thing. Uh, but the interesting thing is this, this is a computer, a computer drawing of a, a cilium. Uh, look where it's published. It's published in the journal Nanotechnology. Life contains nanotechnology, machines that, that uh, are e difficult even for humans to produce uh, at, um, at this time. So that's my, um, uh, okay, oh, and another one. And this is continuing, this is continuing. This is a story, the next slide is a story from the current issue of the journal Nature, the most prominent science journal in the world. Life is complicated. The more biologists look, the more complexity there seems to be. This is published on the 10th anniversary of the decoding of the human genome. And it essentially says that scientists have found unexpected depths of complexity. Here's a few quotes from the, from the paper. The complexity of biology has seemed to grow by orders of magnitude. The more we know, the more we realize there is to know. Uh, the signaling pathways were fairly simple and linear, we thought, in the past, but now it's infinitely more complex. So the appearance of design is, is, is really getting overpowering. Holy moly, <laughs> time flies. <coughs> Darwinism, which is taught as a science, purports to explain design. So this is my second point. And as uh, evidence, I will show um, uh, a quote from Douglas Batuma, who's president of the Society for the Study of Evolution. And he writes that 
The reason that natural selection is important is that its central idea is that it's the central idea that explains design in nature. And he goes on to say that it displaces God as an explanation for that design. So Darwinism purports to explain design. And that's a very questionable assertion. And for that, we will look at a man named Franklin Harold, who wrote a book called The Way of the Cell, published by Oxford University Press. And he was commenting on intelligent design. And he wrote the following, we should reject as a matter of principle the substitution of intelligent design for the dialogue of chance and necessity. But we must concede that there are presently no detailed Darwinian accounts of the evolution of any biochemical system, only a variety of wishful speculations. In other words, we're ruling out intelligence in the sign uh, uh, not because of, of the uh, data, but because of uh, an arb arbitrary principle. Thus, intelligent design should be taught as a science. And here I'll quote myself from that uh, chapter in the book. <laughs> <laughs> And I wrote, <laughs> in proposing explanations for nature, we must use all the data and all of the rational faculties we have. The end result of stubborn adherence to a simplistic division of nature into discoverable mechanics and undiscoverable purpose, I say, is nothing less than the official divorce of science from reason. And remember, one of the facets of reason is to be able to recognize other minds. Failure to do so leads to irrationality. I'm going to skip a couple of these because I'm running low on time. Oh, that was funny. Uh, <laughs> and go directly to what I perceive as its effects in biology. Here's quotations from a standard review uh, in Feb's Letters, which is biology journal, uh, on protein folding, the co-translational folding and interactions of nascent protein chains. And the author yeah, is just doing science. Another important constraint is the inability of a cell to tolerate significant amounts of unfolded non-functional protein. As a result, every cell has evolved mechanisms that identify and eliminate misfolded and unassembled proteins. And uh, he goes on to say, to accomplish a timely recognition of nascent membrane proteins by the translocon bound RNC during the integration process, the system has therefore evolved a mechanism that utilizes ribosome-induced folding of selected nascent chain sequences within the ribosomal tunnel. Okay? All right. Well, of course, as you may have noticed, he's talking about a little bit about evolution. But if you remember the quotation from, uh, from uh, what's his name, <laughs> the author of uh, The Way of the Cell, Franklin Harrell, thank you. We have no evidence that these systems evolved by Darwinian processes. Now let's do a little trick. Let's look at this, let's reread this sentence. As a result, every cell has mechanisms that identify and eliminate misfolded and unassembled proteins. What knowledge have we lost by taking away that word? Let's do it for the second sentence. To accomplish a timely recognition, da da da, this system has a mechanism that utilizes ribosome induced folding. What knowledge have we lost? We have lost no knowledge. Therefore, these statements are non-rational, or I would even say irrational. We have no basis uh, for making them. But if you are familiar with the biology literature, and if you're uh, sensitive to it like I am, and, and very few other biologists are, uh, you see this all the time. So here's a summary of my argument. Life, uh, life looks exceedingly designed. Uh, uh, the design of life is the subject of scientific study by Darwinism, uh, but Darwinism is uh, a shaky explanation, and since Darwinism is taught as a science, there is no reason that intelligent design uh, should not be taught as a science. And failure to do so, to rule out one life possibility, uh, can lead to uh, irrationality. Thank you. <laughs>